Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumps to Lightning episode. Today I have Jonathan with me from the Azure Arc Enable Kubernetes engineering team to talk to me. How do you actually go by and troubleshoot Azure Arc Enable Kubernetes? Play the music. Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumps to Lightning episode. Today I have my friend with me, Jonathan Wang from the Azure Arc Enable Kubernetes engineering team. Jonathan, how are you doing? Doing good, Lior. How about you? I'm excited to have you on the show because you've been working on some cool things. Uh, first thing first, Jonathan, who you are and what is it that you do? Yeah. Um, hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Jonathan. Um, I'm in the Arc product team and uh, mostly focused on supportability site right now, meaning that I look for all the uh, situations customer got into and try to figure out a way to help them and make their life easier. Um, Jonathan, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were used to be a support engineer as well, right? Yeah, I have been a support engineer for three years and, uh, yeah, that was my background. So that's a lot of, that's a, that, that, those are many years of listening to customer, uh, you know, problems with, you know, with products. So that, uh, that's definitely an interesting experience. Uh, I wish we had more time to talk just about that, but today we're here, Jonathan, to talk about. Uh, something pretty important uh, that you worked on, which is how do you troubleshoot? How do you diagnose um, Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters? So before we're diving into, into the document, and you know, I know that you also have a good demo to show me, talk to me for a second about the motivation of creating something like this. Like, what was the reason behind this? Right. So um, Arc is still relatively new to a lot of a lot of people mm -hmm. and when they are trying to know more about the service it is just natural that they will try out something and um based on the incoming uh support requests and uh community questions i see a lot of folks stuck get stuck on the first step which is onboarding resources uh to to arc and i think uh, I wanted to focus on Kubernetes onboarding scenarios today mm -hmm. because I feel like that's like what is trouble uh, like uh, a lot of customers are encountering today. So, yeah, basically that's the reason why uh, the product group tried to come up with the off official documentation mm -hmm. and along with a step by step guidance for customers to go through when they get into this situation again. Yeah. So we're looking at the, you know, we're seeing on screen the document right now. And I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, Jonathan, on, you know, in the context of those support cases, the things that we're seeing, were you surprised by the fact that the thing that was, the, the first thing that you do, right, is arc enabling a Kubernetes cluster. That's the onboarding experience. That's connecting that to the control plane and all of that. Were you surprised by the number of cases that we were seeing around this? Um, surprise and not surprise because like when I, when I look in, when I got the data, like, uh, how many people are stuck on this and, and I went trying, I understand mm -hmm. like why they were stuck. And I, I figured it would be, I like, don't get me wrong. Like the product group has been improving the documentation every day sure. and trying to make it as clear as possible. But I think it will not hurt to have another dedicated, uh, documentation just to talk about like, what are the configurations customer need to do for them to onboard their clusters successfully. Yeah. 100% and troubleshooting guides is something that's been there for ages and every, you know, again, this is just my opinion, but every good product should have some sort of troubleshooting guide. So Jonathan, we're looking at the doc, walk me through this. Sure. Um, so when we, when we look into the documentation, uh, you can see that uh, we, we separated into two main areas one mm -hmm. is the connections without a proxy and the one like connection with the proxy server mm -hmm. and um if we scroll down uh it's all text but uh i know like if we see a, a graph it's always more interesting right. so like let's start with maybe connection with without a proxy and then let's just expand this graph okay so um in this graph, you can see the first step 
is that we try to see like whether the user, the one that is executing um, the, the onboarding scenarios, whether that user has sufficient permissions. And we can look at this from Azure Portal actually. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, in my own uh, subscription, if I go to Azure Portal, you can see I am the service administrator and I have full access to all resources. So for that point, uh, it's good. And then we can go back to the previous tab and look at this, the next one, um, like whether our CLI is the latest version and that mm -hmm. will lead me to bring up the, uh, the terminal. And it's already uh, typed down, so I just need to press enter. So basically what we're, you know, Jonathan, just from a flow perspective, we're trying to lay down the fundamentals first, right? Before we're diving into the more complex thing, which is just like, hey, let's dive straight into networking. That you know, there are a few things that needs to come before that, right? Right, right. And and those are really important steps because they will set the found foundation of like whether the environment is suitable for uh, cluster onboarding. Okay. All right, so we can see that uh, now we are at the, the terminal and then we can see our Azure CLI is actually running at 2.43. And I believe mm -hmm. it, if it's not the latest, it's not 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 far away from the latest because I just updated like yesterday. I think so. it's the latest. I, I checked it this <laughs> morning actually, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good, that's good. Um, okay, and then uh, we can head back to the, the graph and see what's next. Okay. Um, the next will be uh, whether our extension is actually at the latest uh, version. So now again, we head back to the terminal. Right, so the next command we should be uh, listing out. Um, so I have actually, just let me go through the, the comments, should be somewhere here. So this is the extension. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have all the required extensions um, installed, and I believe they're all in the latest version as well. Okay. Yep. And let's head back to the to the graph again. So the next thing is um, whether you know the the cube config is actually pointing to the right cluster. Mm -hmm. um, so I think from this step and the next step and the re resource provider part, I want to just skip because it's basically just doing the same as the previous two steps. Sure. Directly. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a foundation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we can directly jump to the, the network requirements part because that's like like what most people are like stepping stepping upon on. Like that's they, where they people, get a lot of That's issues. where things are breaking, right? I mean. Yes, exactly, so. exactly. and. And I can tell you like how many different kind of issue I see here. Some people are running into DNS resolution issue. Some people, mo most of the time, it's just about like whether the network is able to access to the required endpoints. Yeah. And um, so I have prepared like a little bit of uh, environment uh, to show so that you can actually uh, test it yourself, like whether your environment mm -hmm. is allowing you, your, your cluster to access to those required endpoints. Cool, show it to me. So um, before we, we, we go into it, I want to uh, explain a little bit about the setup. So in this environment, we actually have one proxy server acting as the proxy server, and it will actually, um, allow like anyone like administrators to set up like what what um what urls the the clients could actually access to mm -hmm. so um in this one we are using a uh, squid uh the proxy server that that's called squid and mm -hmm. i'm going to show you what are in the allow list here so uh you can see there are one two three four like eight endpoints, I'm mm -hmm. allowing the clients to access. And okay. meaning that if my client tried to access 
URLs other than this eight endpoints, they are they will not be allowed to access, and they should be getting like a four o three, like uh, an authorized access, mm -hmm. or or something similar. So let's take a look at that. Okay. And now we are at the proxy client, which is just, you know, it, it could be a VM or anything that is within the proxy environment that's using that proxy server to, to, uh, to reach outside world. And we can use the command curl with mm -hmm. this actually is my proxy server IP address. And then this is actually the URL I'm trying to access to. And yep. as you can see, google.com was not in the allow, allow list I just showed. So I should be getting the 403 uh, access right now. And then you see it. We actually yep. get a 403. And let's just, Jonathan, let's just take a pause for a second and explain explain why this is so important. Like, because you mentioned, you know, you mentioned that it's really, you know, we see that the DNS issues and, you know, the amount of memes that are out there online around it's always DNS is, <laughs> that's always funny. But but this is really where things are breaking. Like, it's like you have an allow list, which is very simple, and you're, we're seeing customers are just not having the right endpoints in that allow list. And this is what actually we're trying to improve as part of the documentation and as part of, as part of this troubleshooting guide, right? I mean, this is why it's right. so critical. Okay. That's exactly right. Yeah. All right. So we've seen the 403 and we know that Google, you know, we can't access google.com from the cluster. Um, so right. what's next? What next is like what, like, I would like to show another example of like the ones that this, this client can actually access to so that you can have a comparison, like uh, the message you're seeing actually tell you what you can access and what you cannot. All right. So another url i'm testing here for showing that they can actually access is uh portal.azure.com um sorry Let, let's use login.microsoftonline.com okay. because this one shows more direct messages um so if i uh click enter i actually get 503 serves and available it's so if you go look up 503 it's not saying anything about access or permission. It's actually something on the server side because we're using curl. So it cannot really show that, um, you know, the whole content it, it wants to show, but basically it's saying that they have access. This client has access yeah. to access to the required endpoints. So that alone, I think it's like the part I want to show in the network requirements, uh, section. So it's an acknowledgement, maybe not maybe the the message because of the architecture the way things are laid down the message is maybe not the one that you were expecting to see but the actual fact that the fact that you're getting a message that's your really your 200 quote to quote that's really your okay right exactly that's yeah. exactly right all right okay um and then with that i think uh that's what i want to show in the proxy part and then we can head back to the to the graph and see like what else we will need to check before uh you know we can safely say okay you know we can go ahead and execute the onboarding command so as you see there are only a few steps left um so after um after you you set up the uh ne network requirements i mean mm -hmm. after you check the network requirements the next thing you will see is actually, so what I didn't say here is that um, because this is troubleshooting, so it means that you might have already tried uh, the onboarding command and, and you encounter issues. And yeah. this is like giving you all the steps, right? So that's why in this next step, you see, I, I, I tell like the article tells you to go directly check whether pods are running in like the namespace Azure Arc. And then that's exactly like, what we should be trying to see right now. Okay. So we go back to the to the first terminal, and then we go check um, kubectl get pods, and then see whether all pods are 
running inside uh, the 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 net, net uh, namespace Azure Arc, and yeah. then we can and then we can see that they are actually all running with one completed. So everything looks uh, perfect here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have back to the graph again. So here comes a little bit of a, a you know a direction change because like if you do see any pod that is not in the running state then you might need to go further but if you see all pods are run in running state and you don't see any other like uh symptoms in the cluster meaning that you can also tell from the adder portal that the cluster is like very healthy then mm -hmm. you know you're done everything is okay so that's why when it's it's like it's having a no it goes to the end but if you are seeing anything else now is the part that i i really want to show mm -hmm. which is like uh, uh i'm very proud to say like our product group uh develops this mm -hmm. uh, very cool feature that you could just go run with the same kind of experience you have with other CLI commands, which is called uh, AZ Connected KDA's Troubleshoot, which will trigger, <clears throat> sorry, which will trigger the service to collect all the required information it needs to collect into a folder. And then that folder actually has, you know, all the information, all the yeah. logs about the cluster. And then, you know, you could just tell from that uh that folder in the, the information inside that folder to know like what's happening and uh we can we can quickly check about that right now and then All we right. can go on later on and you know jonathan i wish while you are you know while you're pulling in the terminal you know it's kind of funny to say but i wish i had some broken clusters so i can actually test this uh test the uh, uh the troubleshooting command because you know i've been wanting to test it out but you know I, you know, I don't have any firewalls between myself and all the endpoints, so it's hard for me to know what, you know, what is not working. But now it makes me want to create some sort of a scenario that is broken by design. Um, yeah, so we can see so we can see how it looks like. So show me the troubleshooting commands. Sure. Uh, let me clear the screen for a bit. And then uh, so it's very, very straightforward. It's just like what I typed there. It's AZ connected K days troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. And then you press that's uh, dash G. Yeah, resource group. And then you type in the, the resource group name and then you type dash N your cluster name, uh, which I will be saying like this is my uh, cluster name. And then you type enter and then it will start, you know, the whole process will, will be kick started and then mm -hmm. it will start collecting all the data, all the logs it needs to collect. So, um, I actually. What the output yeah. looks like? How does yeah. the output look like? Yeah. I actually have it. Uh, yeah, I have run. i um, run that already. So oh, uh, cool. let me just go into the. Yeah. So. It will by default go into uh, a folder called dot Azure, and then within Arc Diagnostic Logs, and mm -hmm. then also like your cluster name, the day, the timestamp. So yeah. that's like the the you know the deepest uh, folder name will be like that. Very troubleshooting uh, support oriented uh, naming yeah. schema, right? Yes, exactly. Because you don't know how many times you will be running, so you might right. as well have like a date and time hash in some way. Fair to... point. Fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's 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 see what's uh, what what are the folders inside this? Okay. Okay, so hmm. you can you can see they are agent state, they are resource snapshot, they are cluster info, agent locks, diagnoster output. That's pretty et cetera, comprehensive. Et yeah, that's pretty comprehensive. Yeah. And most importantly, the most uh, common thing we 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 are encountering the outbound network connectivity check, mm -hmm. and also the DNS check. So. Mm -hmm. These are very, very important data, uh, like for like customers themselves to to see like what's happening. And mm -hmm. the coolest thing is that if this is 
not able to be figured out by customers themselves, we can move on to the next step, which I believe is that's the time that you can create a support ticket yeah. and then just attach like what we were just what we were just seeing there to yeah. the support ticket for support engineers or further on like product group to look at to figure out what's happening in the cluster. Yeah, really accelerate the process of opening the support ticket, but actually also attaching the relevant log files that you would have been asked to do so either way. So that's kind of important. Well, I'm happy that I'm happy that we we created this, you know, this this flow here, Jonathan. I uh you know it's it's a short and sweet demo, and it's maybe not the most you know, sexiest topic in the world, right? Troubleshooting. But at the end of the day, right, when you're trying to get something onboarded into production and you're working in an enterprise environment and you have all these endpoints and network and architecture and all those things that can go wrong, these are the things, these are the features that are make and break, uh, make or break for me. Uh, so I'm happy that I had a chance to uh, to look at this. For the Jumpstart viewers, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us for this another episode. Let me know in the comments down below, is this something that you feel will help you moving forward with your Arc Enable Kubernetes journey? Do you feel that this is something that you will want to learn more on? Let me know in the comments down below. We'll come up with more things around this line of uh, topics um, to share with you. Jonathan, I wanted to uh, tell you uh, thank you or uh, for you know for joining me for this uh, Jumpstart Live in episode. Always a, pre a pleasure. For the Jumpstart viewers, make sure to like and subscribe to uh, to the channel. There's a lot more things that are coming. Um, and this is also going to be our last episode for 2022. So wish you happy holidays if you're celebrating those. And thank you. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you.